Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Momo and I'm happy to have you here. Welcome back if you've been here before. It's nice to see you again. Today I'm going to show you how I did some chrome nails and I will say that there was a little bit of trial and error with these. The design I ended up going with wasn't the initial one that I was shooting for, but that's okay. Sometimes it goes that way. So today's video will show a little bit of troubleshooting, a change of plans, and what I think is a really beautiful result. So you'll see that I'm starting with this beautiful green shade. I love this collection, and you'll see that I use more of this collection later in the video. This is from the Korean brand Tiny, and you can find them at Zillabu. I think that's where these came from. The collection is called the Neon Struck Ice Cream Collection, and it's these beautiful neon, but as the ice cream implies, kind of muted shades. They are super versatile, and I've gotten so much use out of them. I would say if you're looking for this type of polish and you are a Korean gel enthusiast, this would be a great purchase. So I went ahead and applied two coats. So you only saw me apply one, but it definitely did need a second coat off camera. And it was a little bit streakier than I remember. I think because I didn't, I haven't used that color in a while and I didn't shake it. So definitely make sure to do that. So you're seeing that I am applying this powder top gel. This is from Ice Gel. It's specifically formulated for chrome. With any chrome, the way you apply it is to put on a non-wipe top gel, so something that cures without a sticky layer, cure it, and then rub in the chrome powder. And there are other steps as well to seal it in. We've cured, in this case, for 25 seconds per Ice Gel's manufacturer recommendation and taken it out of the lamp and I do always say, I think for whatever reason, chrome applies best to a nail that's come right out of the lamp. So that's what I'm doing. I'm applying the top gel one nail at a time to make sure that right after it's cured, I take it out and I apply the chrome powder right away. I've noticed that if I do the top gel on all five nails, by the time I get to like the ring finger and the pinky, the chrome is just not applying as well. So that's just my experience. Yours may vary. And I think you could probably get away with doing two nails at a time, maybe even three, three and two, but I just go ahead and do the cures one by one. So yes, ultimately, I don't think I really needed to apply the green in the background because this is a really opaque chrome. This applies super green. It's part of a larger collection that I got from Nashley Nails. This is an ice gel chrome. I do have a discount code for Nashley Nails if you're interested. It's 10% off. I'll leave the details in the description. Ice gel makes really good chromes, I have to say really, really high quality stuff from what I've experienced. So I feel like you can't go wrong with them, but I'll let you know if that ever changes. <laughs> anyway, just going through and doing all of these nails. And oh, I think I meant to say that the reason I put the green in the background was so that it would turn out extra green, you know, with a green polish in the background with the chrome. If there was any little bit of sheerness, which I don't think there is much with this chrome, but if there were, then the green gel polish would help to really emphasize the greenness of the chrome. But beside that, I just like having a gel color in the background to kind of create an even border. It's easier to see with a colored gel where you're laying it than if I were to just rely on creating a really clean border to the nail, like around the cuticles with the top gel that I was using. I hope that makes sense. I think it probably will, but you can't see when you're putting the top gel down. So if I were to just put that on a bare nail and then do the chrome, even if the chrome showed up as green as it does here, it still would probably not look as clean around the edges as it would laying a color down first. So now I'm going through and just removing any excess powder with a little makeup brush. This is just an eye brush, but it works well for this. You want it to be soft so it doesn't scratch the chrome, but you also want it to be firm enough that it really gets rid of all the little glitters and chrome particles. And the reason you want to do that is one, so that you don't contaminate the top coat you use to seal this in with all those little bits of glitter. But two, because if you do get those little bits of chrome laying on the nail like glitter, it kind of disrupts the mirror 
effect that you're going for with the chrome. It doesn't look as mirrored and shiny. So if you saw my last video, you would have seen this process as well, but I'm creating a little lip around the edge of the nails um, with a file, just filing around the edges to create a little lip where the chrome powder isn't there. And sometimes when you do this, you can see I just scraped this little bit and I'm going back in with the sponge I used to apply the chrome and just rubbing again. It's not a perfect fix. It doesn't completely get the mirrored effect back, but you can kind of reduce the appearance of any scratches on the chrome. One thing you can do too is just be careful. Don't be like me. That video is sped up, so I'm not actually going that quickly, but you kind of want to be careful when you're filing around the edges of the chrome in order to not slip and scratch any of it off. I didn't show it, but I did go ahead and use that same brush to get rid of any nail dust from filing, any little last bits of chrome, and I'm applying a top coat. And actually, secretly, this is my second layer of top coat. So if you really want to lock in chrome, one great method, among many others, is to use two layers of top coat. Using two, I think, kind of ensures that if you miss any little spots with the first one, you won't lose that chrome once you touch your nails with any type of soap, certainly acetone or alcohol. You need to make sure every part of the nail is encapsulated in top gel. So using two coats, I think helps to just basically double check yourself. And also it just helps to create a stronger, thicker surface against any type of scratching. And it came in very handy this time around because I ended up having to rejig my design, which you'll see in a little bit here. So just finishing up with the last little bits of the top gel and this is the Izemi top gel in I believe it is the thick version love Izemi top product anyway here is oh boy <laughs> here is I would call it a mistake it's not really a mistake it's just something that did not turn out the way I wanted it to you'll see I'm leaving a little sped up version of this in the video just because it's part of the story, it's part of the reality of doing your nails, it's part of the reality of this nail set. I had intended to do a design that I've seen around, which is chrome, like a beautiful chrome background with some acrylic textured wavy something or other on top. And the really cool thing about this design, if it's done correctly, is that it's the super shiny chrome in the background and then this beautiful raised 3D textured um, matte finish. Um, but I don't know. I just hated it. <laughs> I hate everything about this. I don't like the color combo. It didn't work out the way I liked. And to me, my lines just look too messy. I just was like, no, we're not going to do this. I'm not going to wear this on my on my nails. So I had to decide what to do from here. And what I ultimately decided to do was regroup, try something different, but also actually something familiar. I ended up deciding to do something fairly simple. And the reason for that is because it was 1 a.m. at this point. I had to go to sleep and I had just mixed 15 different shades of purple, Ugh, got gel all over my hands, just got gel everywhere to try and do this design that ended up just not looking right. <laughs> so yeah, I decided to take it back to basics and just do a really cute little dotting tool flower design with acrylic because I did still want that contrast between the matteness of the acrylic and the shininess of the chrome. And you know what? These are always easy to do. I think this is one of the most approachable types of nail art if you are new to this, but you wanna add a little bit of flair to your nails. I also think that this works well with regular, you know, lacquer polish as well, air dry lacquer. So yeah, something fun to, to add to the nails without spending three million years awake and trying to decide what I was gonna do next. So you saw that I went ahead and created these little flowers with 
one of the gel colors from that same collection that the original green that I put on my nails is from, the Tiny Collection. And now I'm going ahead and pouring some acrylic powder over it. And I'm really making sure to coat this well because you kind of only get one shot to coat the gel in acrylic before putting it into the lamp. And the more acrylic you get on there, the more raised and matte it will be. So then I'm removing the excess with a nice stiff brush and remember my chrome is protected now so I can go in with a pretty stiff brush in this case in fact you really will want to to get all of the little bits of acrylic off so we'll watch again as I do blue on this next nail I can't decide which color is my favorite I really like all of them you'll see that after I lay down these dots I will go ahead and just sort of tap around where each of the dots meet to Make sure that the gel is connecting all the way. So you can see I'm doing it right here, just sort of tapping and allowing the gel to connect each dot to each other and make kind of a smooth, uniform flower. I made a video a while ago with these types of acrylic flower nails, and someone mentioned that they feel like a lot of bang for your buck, like they're not very difficult, but they create a really cool, I don't know if polished is the right word, but just a very cool effect that looks maybe harder than it is. So I totally agree with that. I thought that was such a good point and I would recommend giving these a shot if you feel like it. Also, I mentioned this in the last video when I did these. One of the biggest struggles I think with any type of art is composition. So just play around with how dense you want the flowers to be, where you want them to be spread out. That can be, especially with a simple design, one of the most important things that makes the design look great or maybe a little strange. So time to again coat this nail in lots and lots of acrylic powder. Don't be shy. Make sure you're getting it really well saturated. And I do kind of just do a tiny little tap to get any excess off. And then removing the powder again. This is my favorite part when you get to reveal the beautiful nail design underneath. And we'll just speed through the last cute little nail here. I do love the yellow on the green as well. The contrast is very nice. I just wanted to say thank you, by the way. Thank you if you're still here watching the video at this point. That is a huge compliment to me that anyone would want to spend their time watching my videos. And thank you if you're new to the channel. I've had a surge of new subscribers and I know that people don't always comment, so I don't know who's out there watching this, but if you are and if you're new to the channel, thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. So by the power of editing, I declare these nails done. <laughs> I went ahead and did the pinky off camera. I hope you enjoyed watching this and let me know if you recreate this. I would love to know. I think this was a nice save from the design that I originally had in mind and I hope you agree. I look forward to seeing you soon and I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye!